Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showcasing a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Distilled. Yes, this one's designed by Dave Beck and published by Paverson Games. It's a one to four player game where we will be taking on the roles of distillers, running a distillery so that we can make the most spirits, learn the most recipes, and become the master distiller by having the most spirit points at the end of the game. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lots of things. <laughs> and so the thing that initially drew us to this game mm -hmm. was that theme, actually, mm -hmm. how unique it is. And not only, it was also, I think, a finalist for a couple of awards. Yes, the Ion Awards as well as the Cardboard Edison. Uh, and so right. today what we're going to be doing is kind of demonstrating how the game is played by going over a full round. And so before we get started, we do want to mention that this is technically a prototype copy of the mm -hmm. game. It is an extremely high quality prototype. It looks game ready. It yeah. does. Pretty close. But because of that, things are still subject to change mm -hmm. in the final copy. And if you are interested in learning more about this game, there will be a link to the Kickstarter campaign down below. Feel free to click that whenever you'd like. And with that, I think we're ready to begin. Yep. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up here for a two-player game of Distilled. There's kind of a lot going on. It's right? sprawling, yes. It is sprawling. Uh -huh. We kind of had to get it all close in together. And so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, each player has their own player board. So it's technically their distillery. Yep. It's going to house a lot of things that you're going to kind of accumulate throughout the game in order to make these spirits, mm -hmm. right? Yep. At the top here, we have space for three of uh, upgrades, which uh, you'll learn just kind of helps you do things better. It makes your factory more efficient. Mm -hmm. In the bottom half of the board over here, we have our pantry that's going to house all of our ingredients in order to make the spirits. We have our storeroom that will hold our barrels as well as our bottles in order to bottle the spirits. And then we also have our warehouse where we're going to be aging spirits that mm -hmm. need to be aged. Right. In addition, each player has their own specific uh, distiller identity. There are nine of these cards that come with the game mm -hmm. and each person uh, comes from one of three different geographic regions. Yes, there's the Americas, there's Asia and Oceania, as well as Europe. Mm -hmm, that's right. And mm -hmm. so they also have their own kind of asymmetric power right. that they can use throughout the game. Uh, so for example, I am Joanna and my ability says I can sell each non-aged spirit for a dollar more. Okay, so. gotcha. Yeah, so mine is reveal two cards from the market deck once per round, keep one of them, and return the other to the bottom. Yes. I do have to buy it, though. <laughs> this all makes sense uh, yes. as we start explaining. Exactly. And all of our distillers just kind of sit here in the office, of course, overlooking Overseen. the operations. Mm -hmm. Each distiller identity on the back side tells you all of the uh, stuff that you start the game with, how mm -hmm. much money, what uh, kind of ingredients, as well as their own signature recipe. So yes. mine is the Caninha Cachaça drink. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I also have a, a, sh a starting ingredient of sugarcane juice that's going to start off of my board. I don't have it yet. Signature ingredient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, signature and ingredient. And so I have a strong aroma. And this is one that I don't quite know how to pronounce, but it says Baijo. So Baiju, maybe? Baijo, according to the uh, the little um, phonetic Pronun pronunciation in there. Ah. This is one that I've not tried before. Now over here, we have the markets. So there are two main types of market. There's the basic market that, that uh, has all of kind of like your essential stuff that you mm -hmm. need in order to distill the spirits. We have the yeast, water. We have the three different types of sugars, the grain-based, plant, and fruit-based sugars, as well as two different types of barrels, clay and wood. Mm -hmm. And then over here, we have the premium markets. These are typically more expensive, but they'll give you more yields in the form of more money as well as more spirit points, right. which is technically what you're trying to earn throughout the game. Mm -hmm. The three different rows represent different types of uh, cards that you can buy from the market. Yep. Down here, we have the items that are going to be comprised of different types of barrels as well as bottles. Mm -hmm. The middle row here has premium ingredients that are just better versions of th these three different types of sugars. Yep. And then at the very top here, we have the upgrades for our distillery that are going to come in the form of specialists who you can hire as well as um, equipment. And over here, we have the score track that's mm -hmm. going to keep track of all of our spirit points because at the end of seven rounds, which is the round tracker over here, it's going to be whoever has the most spirit points is the winner. And lastly, we have our recipe checklist. Mm -hmm. And so each player has their own version of this. This is a very, very important checklist because it tells mm -hmm. you the different types of spirits that you are able to make. Right. So let's take a closer look. And so at the start of the game, you only know how to make two different types of spirits. You can make vodka and moonshine. In order to unlock these different types of spirits, you need to purchase the recipe during the market phase, which we'll talk about when we start the round. Now, next to the label tells you the different region that that specific spirit is from. To the right of that, it tells you which type of sugars you're allowed to have as a part of the distillery mix. And so in this example, uh, for the, the most one of the most basic spirits, which is vodka, you can have any kind of those sugars in that mix. But say, for example, cachaça over here, you have to have a plant-based sugar and you're not allowed to have any of the other two types. In addition, it tells you what type of barrel is required 
uh, for you to put it in in order to distill it. And so mm -hmm. a lot of these will have metal barrels. Sometimes you'll see wood barrels. This one over here requires clay. To the right of that, it tells you whether or not you're required to age the spirit before you can sell it. And on the right hand side over here, it tells you how many spirit points uh, you're going to earn for selling that type of spirit, as well as any bonus money that you that you would earn. All right, so we're going to walk you through one entire round of this game as mm -hmm. if we started on the second round. Right, yes. We played the whole first round and we basically made moonshine and vodka, and vodka yes. <laughs> just to, to acquire more money and kind of get things going. Yep. But now we're entering the second round to see what we can make. Right. And so each round consists of four different phases. Yep. Over the course of the game, we're going to be buying things from the market, distilling our spirits, selling them, and then aging them right. in that order. Exactly. And so starting with the market phase, players are going to be taking turns going back and forth, purchasing cards from the basic market, the premium market, as well as additional recipes until everybody has passed. Let's just say I am the start player. Sure. So I have this first player marker. I'm going to start my um, my market phase by purchasing a new recipe because I want to make cachaça this round. Right. If I consult my recipe list, cachaça is a bronze spirit. You can kind of see them. They are in uh, color coordinated. Mm -hmm. And so if I look over here, on this board over here, the bronze spirits cost me two money. To get so, the knowledge. Yes. So I'm spending my two money two. and I'm going to place this bronze cube over here. And so now for the rest of the game, I have unlocked this cachaça recipe. recipe. Mm -hmm. And so that would be me. Now it would go to you. Yeah. So uh, I want to do something similar. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock the ability to learn about whiskey. So this is a silver um, recipe, uh -huh. so it's going to cost me four. So I have one, two, three, and four. Nice. That goes out, and then I'm going to place... Whiskey. Yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to place this on here, and I'll explain exactly why I'm trying to do that in just a little bit. Is it whiskey neat? Or on it the is. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, so now it's back to me, and I need to buy ingredients to make this uh, cachaça spirit. So my cachaça requires me to have at least one plant-based sugar. Now in my pantry, I already have one plant sugar, but as you'll see, there's a little bit of push your luck in mm -hmm. terms of making these spirits, so I probably want to acquire another one. Okay. In addition, in order to make any spirit, you need at least one yeast and one water. Right. So I have one yeast already, I probably need <laughs> another water. So then now I'm gonna get a water from the basic market, I do want to mention that you can only acquire two cards from the basic market per round. So in order to symbolize this, I've turned this uh, 90 Sideways, degrees. Yeah. Yes. And so that's me. Now it goes back to you. And it's free. All of the prices for all these cards in the bottom right hand corner where that kind of sales tag is. Oh, and water also allows you to do something more. Water and yeast both have a, an additional ability. So this says when purchased, I can draw the top card of any market deck choose to purchase it or return it to the bottom of the deck. So mm -hmm. I might as well do that. Yeah, maybe get something fancy. Yeah, I do want a bottle. So I'm going to draw the top card of the item deck. Oh, there you it's go. It's a worm bottle. Oh, and it's cheap. So this is from my region, which is uh, the Americas. Americas. Yeah. And so this is going to cost me two money. And uh, it says when selling, I gain one spirit point. But if it's a spirit from the Americas, I gain two instead. So that's mm, pretty nice. That's perfect. And it's also going to gain me an additional money for when I sell. So I'm going to buy this. Okay. So it's two, two money. Uh, and then this bottle is going to go into, into store my room. storeroom. Yep, exactly. Now it's back to you. So I know I want to make whiskey. My whiskey recipe shows that I need at least two grain. So I'm definitely going to want to take some grain right mm -hmm. now. So I'll take this one. It is free. And that is one of my basics. Uh, unlike water or yeast, uh, I do not get the ability to do something else. Mm -hmm. Now, Naveen does have a lot of money. So he could have chosen or he could still choose to purchase one of these upgraded premium mm -hmm. uh wheat sugars yes and i so, could uh the only thing is whiskey specifically requires a barrel in which i don't have a wood barrel i have a mm, metal barrel right now so he'll need to buy that exactly okay now back to me i think i do need another plant sugar since i do have all this excess money i'm gonna buy this this uh plant sugar because it costs one one dollar more than that one but it's also worth one more spirit point and it gets me an extra buck back so it's kind of yeah. like i'm gonna make it back anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and spend that it's a no-brainer. Yep. Yeah. And this will also go into my pantry. Perfect. Now back to you. Anytime somebody purchases from this area, we slide down to the right mm -hmm. and then we refill to the left. Yes. What is this? Mountain spring water. Ooh. Ooh. You know what? Now that that showed up, I'm going to take that spring water versus taking the basic water. So that's going to cost me three. So here's five. Uh-huh. Here's two. And so the reason is because I need water to get this thing going. So yes. I don't have any other water. It would have to come from the basic market. I'd rather have some nice fresh spring water. Yeah. All right. I'm with you on that. Right. So now we have apples. This is a, a premium uh, fruit sugar. Okay. So back to me. I have everything I need in order to distill 
this specific uh, recipe. So with this excess money, I think I'm going to purchase an upgrade. Okay. And I'm gonna buy this large storage. So this is an equipment upgrade. I'm gonna pay the five and I get back one because it costs four. And so this is gonna go here in my in one of my distillery uh, upgrade spots. And so the, the thing that this does is it says, during the market phase, which is right now, I can discount one bottle or one barrel by mm. one. So that's going to be really helpful for me for future rounds. In addition, at the very bottom here, it gives me another end game scoring criteria that's specific to me. So it says I get one spirit point for every two items in my storage at the end of the game. Mm. So it might be in my best interest to try to acquire a lot of items. Right. So that a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of items in my storage, actually. Right. So that would have been really good had you known, you know, when you drew the water, you drew a bottle. Mm -hmm. So had you known ahead of time, that there was a bottle there, you could have had that storage and got this for one less dollar. Yeah. But that's how it goes. It's a, so, <laughs> there's right. no way to know that. There's no way to know. <laughs> all right. Okay, back to me. So uh, I'm going to take another grain because I definitely need to protect myself from a failed spirit. <laughs> so I'm going to take this and we'll explain that in a little bit. And I'll place that. So I've now taken two basic goods from this market here. Mm -hmm. I am no longer eligible to take from this region right here. Yes. And so it's back to me. I have only taken one. So I'm going to go ahead and take a second one. Uh, the yeast is free, just like the water is. And yeast, when purchased, immediately gains you one money. So there really is no reason for me to not take that. Right, you might as well. Might as well. So there's my one money and uh, back to you. Okay, so knowing that I'm making whiskey and I need a wood barrel, all I have is the standard metal barrel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to definitely want to take this one here. Okay. So this is an ex-bourbon hogshed. And it says, when aging for the first time, add an additional flavor card. And so we haven't nice. talked about aging yet, but uh, I'm definitely gonna want this. Yeah. It's gonna cost a big uh, price tag, seven total. Yeah. Okay, so that's my seven, and that goes yep. into my storehouse. And so it's back to me, but I'm gonna pass because I only have three money and I have everything I need. Right. So back to you. Okay, Um. I think, yeah, at this point, I have taken two basics, so I'm gonna pass. So that marks the end of the market phase. So now what we do is we are going to discard the rightmost card of each row, and they go onto our discard truck here, <laughs> slide everything down. So that we have, uh, you know, something fresh something in the market keeps, every round. Keep moving, yeah. Now we go into the distill phase, which is where all the fun happens. We're mm. going to try to make our spirits. Hopefully they're successful, but right. we will see. Yep. And so the way that that works is on the left side of our distillery board here, we have the washback. And so, like I was mentioning earlier, the two big ingredients that you need, or three of them actually, are yeast, you need a sugars, and you need a water. water. Yep. And so it is required for you to have at least one yeast and at least one water but you can put as many uh, sugars as you want in the middle here. Correct. So I'm making cachaça that requires at least one uh, plant sugar. I can have more than that if I want to. Right. And I have two of them in my pantry, so I'm just gonna put both of them in there right now. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because for each sugar card that you have in this middle section here, you get to add one alcohol per card. Right. And so I'm taking this from the alcohol deck over here, and you'll see what the significance of that mm -hmm. is in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that there. Okay. Technically, this could all be done simultaneously, but yep. for demonstration purpose, we're doing one at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add three grain in because this whiskey requires at least two. Yes. And I'm trying to hedge against something terrible that could potentially happen. <laughs> so I'm gonna put three of these in here, and then because of that, I get three alcohol cards, which is great. There you go. Okay. And then we take this entire uh, stack. card stack and we are going to shake it up. We are distilling our spirits as we speak. Yes. I can almost uh, smell and taste the flavors of my cachaça. The, the vanilla hints. And then once everyone's done shuffling, a magical thing happens. You have to remove the top and the bottom card of your stack. Yes. And so that is where that uh, slight uh, push your luck aspect comes into play. Yes. You remove them, that you don't have to discard them. So in this case, I removed one of my uh, my plant sugars, so it's okay. a good thing I had two, and one of my alcohols. These don't get discarded. You get to put them back into your pantry to mm -hmm. use in a future round, but they are not now part of your recipe. Exactly. So thematically, what's going on here, just like in, in real life and distilling, uh, they typically will remove the head and the tail of any distilled batch and then use those for later batches uh, because they're typically the undesirable sections of the alcohol. Okay, so for me, I remove my top and my bottom and I'm gonna flip over. Okay, so good thing <laughs> I bought three grain because the whiskey requires at least two. So one of my grains goes back into the pantry and mm -hmm. that mountain spring water, but it says <laughs> if this is removed during the distill phase, add one basic 
water to your pantry. Nice. But it's going to come back for the future here. Yeah. And I get to take one of my basic waters and put it over here. Yes. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. You still have it. It's just not going to be in your recipe. Right. Then the next part you do in turn order. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go first. Sure. I'm going to flip over my stack and kind of reveal it. At this point, it does not matter how much water or yeast or even alcohol you have in your recipe. Right. All that really matters is the ratio of the sugars. Right. So my cachaca recipe requires me to have at least one plant-based sugar, mm -hmm. and I am not allowed to have any of the other two types. Yes, if you did, you would default back to vodka. To vodka, yes. exactly. And so in this scenario, I was successful in making my, my cachaca spirit. So if I consult my recipe list over here, it requires a metal barrel. And so each player starts the game with a metal barrel as well as a standard glass bottle. Mm -hmm. These two items, whenever you use it, go back into your warehouse, yes. into your storeroom, sorry. They never get discarded. So you don't have to worry about losing these. And so I'm going to add my metal barrel to my, my recipe stack here. Right. And then from this board, I'm going to take the label of whichever kind of spirit I made. So can you pass me a cachaca, please? Cachaca, yes. Thank you. There you go. And the, so the significance of this is each round, whenever you sell a spirit, you're going to place it at the top of your board here so that you can see all the different types of spirits you've made mm -hmm. and also gain these bonuses, which we'll talk about in a second. Yep. Okay, so for me, I think I did make whiskey here. So whiskey requires two grain. Mm -hmm. Uh, it requires one wooden barrel, which I happen to have. Okay. So it's going to be there. And then, so now what I'll take is this whiskey token. And you don't have any of the other types of sugars, I right? don't, no. I, I just made okay, sure that perfect. I only took grain in here. So, so no I defaulting have to vodka. Any problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> and once everyone's finished distilling, we move on to the next phase, which is the cell phase. Yep. So anybody who is ready to or does not want to or can't age their spirit must sell. Right. And so you can sell several spirits in one round, but you have to sell one spirit, one at a time. Back and forth. Back and forth. Mm -hmm. I have my spirit in hand that I have to sell because I cannot age cachaca. And so it needs a bottle. I purchased the bottle during the market phase of this round, this worm bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and add this <laughs> to my, my, uh, my stack. And then I'm going to sell the spirit. Okay. I'm going to lay out all of the cards. And then at the very top left-hand corner here, it tells me how much money I'm going to earn from this spirit stack. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six. My ability here says that when I sell each non-age spirit, I get yep. a dollar more. So that's seven. seven. And then the actual recipe itself doesn't come with any bonus money. So I'm going to get seven money from the bank right now. And then I'm going to count up how many points I earn. Sure. So some of these, I think it's just the the palm. And with my worm bottle, because it says when selling, I gain one spirit point. But if it's an American spirit, which, which this is, is yep. I gain two spirit points instead. So it's going to be two plus two, which is four. Yep. And then plus the amount of points for the spirit itself, which is an additional four spirit points. So that's a total of eight. Eight points, yep. Okay, so I'm going to move from one to nine, nine right is. there. Once you're done selling, all of these cards go back to um, their supplies, with the exception of your metal barrel, as well as any bottles that you had. So this bottle is actually going to go to the side of my player board, because at the end of the game, there's going to be a, an end game scoring condition specifically mm -hmm. for the bottles. Right. Everything else gets discarded. And that's it for me. I've mm -hmm. sold my spirit, so now it goes to Naveen. So I will not be selling this round because whiskey requires aging. So I would r rather age my whiskey and not sell. I do want to mention before we continue that alcohol, because I still have some in my supply, alcohol is actually considered kind of like a wild card. It mm -hmm. can be used as either a yeast or a water in the future. Right. So if I'm low on either of those two things, I don't have to get them from the basic market. I can use this as substitute. It also acts as a diluting card right. so that you don't pull the really important cards that exactly. you need, right? Yep. And actually, before we move on to the next phase, I'm supposed to put my, my spirit label on one of these uh, bonus spots here. Each bonus spot lets you do a specific ability or it gains you points. Yes. Usually the ability is a little bit sweeter than just the one or two points that it gets you. Especially early on, you want to use those abilities. And so I'm going to go ahead and place my label right here, which gets me one free recipe. Nice. So maybe I'm going to use it to uh, unlock one of these gold recipes you because well. they're so expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and make, uh, let's make rum. Cool. <laughs> now we go into the next phase, the final phase of the round, which yep. is the aging phase. Mm -hmm. So I believe Naveen has something to age. Okay, so for aging, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the ingredients and flip them face down, place the appropriate barrel on top, and leave my little marker right here. <laughs> So it's so I know this is stamped as whiskey and it's aging whiskey. I'm going to place this in my warehouse here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a flavor card. Yes. Okay. So you can't look at it. Can't look at it. Goes it goes to the bottom of the stack. This goes to the bottom of the stack. Typically, it helps uh, enhance uh, what's got what you got going on in there. Yes. And because I'm using this barrel right here, it allows me to add a second flavor card the first time this thing is aged. All right. So, so that goes to the bottom. And the thing that these flavor cards do is they gain you additional money. 
depending on uh, how good the flavor card is. And this can be a random draw because it is, yeah. it's thematic in that way. <laughs> it is. So it's all going to be on the left-hand corner. In addition, when you finally go to sell the spirit, there's a little chart here on your distillery board that tells you how many additional points you earn, depending on how many of these flavor cards are in that that stack. Right. So each round that you choose to continue to age that spirit, you're going to continue to, to add a flavor card to it. Right. And so if you have three of these flavor cards, it's an additional six points. Right. If you have the maximum, which is five flavor cards, it's an additional 15 points. Yep. So it does pay um, for you to continue to age mm -hmm. them. Once everyone's aged their spirits, then we go to the end of the round stuff. The first thing that happens is you check to see if anyone has met any of these spirit awards. And so, so these are going to be uh, various things. There are a few of them in the game. Yeah, there's a so handful you, of them. There's a handful of them. So you play with the different uh, selection of them. And so this is just an example. This says, as a builder, you have three equipment distillery upgrades um, in your distillery. So you would have one towards that three total. I don't, exactly. Yeah. If I have three equipment upgrades, then I can score this immediately and flip it over because it's the first person typically uh, who can meet this in a round gets those points. Mm -hmm. And if several people do it in the same round, then you split the points. Mm -hmm. And then at this point, if there was a player who did not sell this round, they have the option of holding a tasting event, which allows them to spend up to four of their points to get that much money in return. Right. So this is kind of a way for you to go into the next round with some money in Espe hand. Especially if you're aging, uh, you want some cash in hand so that yes. you can get something else going so exactly. that you're not defaulting back to vodka and moonshine. Mm -hmm. And then you pass the first player marker mm -hmm. clockwise. This will always rotate uh, throughout the game. And that is essentially how a full round works. So you do this seven times, and at the end of the seventh round, you go into end game scoring. And so obviously, this is not what the board is going to look like <laughs> at the end of the game. We're going to have hopefully not. way more points than that. Yeah. But uh, the first thing that happens is each player gets to score any of their leftover spirits that are mm -hmm. still in their warehouse. You just don't get the bonus for the flavors as well as any of the money, but you right. get all of the other points that are associated. Next, you score bonuses for any of the bottles that you collected. This is why I put this off to the side because it is set collection. Yep. If I have several bottles that are from the same region, then you get a certain amount of points. Right. It kind of scales. So if I have two of them, then I get uh, two points, three is worth four, four is worth seven. seven. So it kind of scales like that. If I have one of each type of region, then okay. it's five points. Five points. Yep. So a lot of different ways to score these bottles. After that, you score your distillery upgrades. So, so those cards that were here at the top, they mm -hmm. have different uh, victory point conditions at yep. the bottom. Just like my large yep. storage. Where's so I would set? get one point for every two items in my storage. Oh, and nice. so I have two uh, items. <laughs> if <laughs> like the game would end here, yeah. Yes. You then score your distillery goals. So this is not something we talked about. Yep. At the start of the game during setup, each player gets three of these. You choose two to keep. Yep. And these are just going to be private end game scoring conditions. So like my close to home says, I can if I have or if I'm tied for the most spirit labels from the same region, mm. then I get five points. Right. So that might steer you in that direction of doing yes. that. These all have to do with be, with having the most of something or yep. being tied for the most. Yeah, like mine is wealthy. Have or be tied for the most money at the end of the game. Oh, wow. Yeah. I want <laughs> and the cash. So there's a lot of these in the game. There's a lot. We yep. only play with two two per player. Mm -hmm. And finally, any leftover money gets turned in for a five to one ratio. Yep. So it's not exactly. a very good ratio. Not the best. But uh, it's still points. It is something. I will say, though, the first time we played this, uh, the score was 94-92. So that might be the difference. Yeah, very close. And that is how you play a game of Distilled. Mm -hmm. That is an entire round of it. Yep. And as you can see, it is a mix of several different mechanics. There's set collection. There's a push your luck. There's there a financial aspect. There's mm -hmm. definitely an economic bit, bit uh, to the game. I do want to add that we didn't mention at this the beginning of that distillery phase, you are allowed to trade in one of your ingredients back into the market for something of equal, equal or, lesser or lesser value. Yep. So just in case you really needed something, there are only seven rounds. Right. You're not completely shut out. Exactly. Now, this game is currently on Kickstarter. So if you're interested in checking it out, as well as learning more information, we have a link uh, to the campaign down, down below. below. But if you have any questions regarding the video, anything that you saw today in this video, please feel free to leave the questions down below. And we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.